You are welcome to this special interview with a man of God that is well known both in and out of Cameroon who has stood the test of time as far as the Roman Catholic Church is concerned. And at this time we felt like meeting him and maybe knowing his views as far as so many things concerning uh, the ongoing crisis in Cameroon and maybe the church. And so at this time I want to turn to um, Bishop Emeritus Emmanuel Bushu. I want to first of all thank you for accepting us here. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Bishop, you have been on retirement for about two years now. I don't know how you're faring now. I'm Maybe. good. I'm happy. I'm good. You're good and happy? Yeah. Okay, if you say you're good and happy, we we'll have a few questions that we intend to ask you on uh, certain situations in the church that you've been um, somebody who other pastors have been under and uh, at this time there are some chaos and at this time, you know, following the crisis in Cameroon, you know, you are somebody who is very vocal, tells the truth. And so we intend to get certain uh, impressions concerning this crisis and the church. I don't know if you approve of that. Welcome. Okay. I would just wish to ask you, um, for some time now you've been very silent as far as uh, the ongoing activities are concerned in the Diocese of Boya, especially at the arrival of the new bishop, uh, Michael Bibi. Can we understand why you've been silent? Well, I've been silent because I should be silent. That we, we retired, you have handed over authority to another person, just go you quietly into your place of rest. That's what I'm doing. That's why I, I, I kept silent. There was nothing for me to be saying or do. Okay. Okay, at this time, there has been um, some interviews that have been taking place in some local media. And on this interview, we followed it, we realized that there are some priests of the missionary sons of Peter that uh, were granted or granted this interview that robbed the Diocese of Boya. Now, I don't know if you are aware of this group of priests. Yes, I know them. I'm aware of them. They are present here in the diocese. But I don't know. Did you watch that video? I have not. Up to this moment I'm talking with you, I have not seen the video. Okay. But this video, those who have watched it, uh, carries a series of serious questions that I would like to start asking you whether you have a solution to some of this problem. There are about 98 religious uh, priests or religious persons that have been banned by the, your successor, Bishop Bibi. And so uh, this problem continues because these people can no longer be part of their services. I don't know if you are aware of this uh, situation. Yes, I, I know that it's more than a year since they were suspended from any pastoral work activity in the diocese of Boya. Okay, uh, Reverend, these 98 uh, religious persons who were banned by your successor, Bishop uh, Michael Bibi, uh, to continue their religious profession in the diocese of Boya. The question I wish to ask now is, did you incarnate or ordain or create this religious group following uh, maybe proper canonical process? Yes, and laws. Yes, we did everything uh, according to due canonical form. We, 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 we worked on that. That is, uh, I accepted them as the bishop at the time in the Diocese of Boya. They came from outside, and then, which means that I allowed them to establish here. That's official. Mm -hmm. And I wrote out that there is a form you have to do to say you people are welcome here. You can establish. Then, um, for incardination, mm -hmm. once you sign those things and they are doing and getting training in the diocese, uh, they are part of it. We call that incardination. So okay. they are taken into the diocese, they yes. become part of the diocese. Just like the diocesan priests you have here. Yes. yes, they are like that. And then ordination. Uh, we follow also due process in 
uh, ordaining before ordaining people. So if you are not of good standing, you will not ordain them. And uh, I will just say uh, two or three things about that. Yes. Uh, normally during formation preparation for ordination as a Catholic priest, mm -hmm. uh, the people in the formation house they evaluate each member at least once a year. They take each candidate, talk about him, and write a report to the bishop. So um, all these people, all of them, were in major seminaries recognized by the Catholic Church in Nigeria. I sent them there every year to do a letter to all the seminaries. Okay. Please have so many of these people to take them. And the rector will accept them. Once they accept them, and then they evaluate every time and send me the report, we keep the files for each candidate. So at the end, when they do the final evaluation for priestly ordination, if they say it's positive, it's positive. If there's no other uh, contrary view uh, about the person, uh, he will be ordained. Uh, secondly, uh, their community, their association to which they belong, they have to recommend them for ordination. They say, this is one of our members. We think that he is worthy of being ordained as a priest. Could you please ordain him for us? Then thirdly, they call the bands. You know, like in the Catholic Church, when you went to get, when you went to get married, yes. uh, to get what you call the sacrament of marriage, right. they call your bands in the church. Mr. John, Madam Mary, they want to be married. Has anybody anything to say about them? So the priests are like that. When you are a deacon, that's the last step to ordination as a priest. They will call your name in the whole diocese or in your particular diocese, you are not from that place. In your particular parish, if you are not from the diocese itself. But they give the list of the candidates and they call them out. It's not just that you bring forth against the people. No. Okay. That uh, when they are doing those open things, ceremony yes. to present them to the mm -hmm. people. So okay. uh, before that uh, ordination time then, they call out these names three times, okay. three different occasions, three Sundays usually. Then um, uh, they ask people that have anything to say about them. Yeah. If they are good things, you mention them. If they are bad things, you mention them. If they are very serious matters that become impediments that will stop them from going, you mention those things. Then they will sit down and consider them. Then the bishop has to take a decision that uh, the candidate is not worthy. So they will notify the person and notify the seminary that that person is suspended, he's not uh, being ordained. So all these people who are ordained, that's why I was saying that there was due process. That means we followed uh, what the law of the church tells us to do. And I personally found out that they were qualified because there was no problem from the seminary, there was no problem from their associations, the group to which they belong, there was no problem from the places where the bands were formed. So I ordained them. Now, but what you say shows a very clean record of them. But yes. why were they suspended? What reason? They were not suspending them because they did things which are not good. Okay. Not okay. like that. The bishop has its reasons. And I think some of them were spelled out now. Yes. And the suspension note was okay. suspension, okay. not okay. annulled. Okay. Suspension. Yes, they did uh, suspend them. Um, uh, if there are any reasons outside of all these things I'm saying, uh, they are questionable. Okay. Yes, whoever had done that. But you like an emeritus. I don't know if the present bishop contacted you to have a knowledge of the situation before suspending them. No, he didn't. He never did that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, if do you know that is if they were ordained by you, and eventually you gave them their workload. Yes. I don't know. Has this workload changed before their suspension? No. Um, okay, they were I ordained them uh, uh, following a uh, due canonical form and uh, I assigned them to work in the diocese of Guia in various places. Okay, now let us get to other matters uh, concerning the CUIB, that is the Catholic University Institute of Boya. I believe that uh, this institute was founded under you. Yeah. as a leader and eventually you were the chancellor of this university. Yeah. Uh, so tell us, was your understanding of how you created this uh, university, has it been met, uh, your aspiration? Um, 
Yes, when I was still in office and I was still working, we, it was it met it was I mean it met all the demands of uh, Catholic universities uh, because we looked very closely at the canons. That's the Catholic Church law book that gives all the directions, all the directives on what you have to do on things like that. They tell you if you are at this level, if you want to do this, this is what you do. They give you all the detailed uh, uh, points on what you have to work on. Okay, but you founded this university. I did. I did. Now, um, and maybe the laws of the Roman Catholic Church were embedded on this university. Yes. Now, the question I wish to ask, who owns this university? It's a Catholic University of the Diocese of Boya. Mm -hmm. That was the original name, but uh, according to the Cameroon uh, uh, law for higher institution, mm -hmm. uh, they still seem to say it's a Catholic University Institute of Boya. Yes, the reason I ask this question, you know, we've been following up events in this university, but at one time we were made to understand in some other interviews that it wasn't under the diocese of Boya. It was a kind of contract, kind of, it's unanimous, uh, should I say, um, it wasn't owned directly by the uh, diocese of Boya. What's your take about that? No, uh, it is. Uh, the University of the Catholic Diocese of Boya. I founded it myself and I signed all the documents. But has it ever been on contract? Um, there is the thing of the canon law that gives autonomy to the Catholic universities. That means you found it, you get a group of people to run it, uh, but it remains Catholic. But that means that you, do, you don't just come into the university at any time and begin to do things there, you follow procedure. That's why we constituted the Board of Trustees that is the highest authority in the university, even though it's diocesan, we follow in church law. Okay, let me ask your relationship with this Board of Trustees as a chancellor. Were you attending meetings, and uh, if not, or yes, were you briefed on the activities of this uh, university? Yes, we called all the meetings, I attended all of them, and uh, things went very well. That's the uh, judgment I can make on that. Things went very well. Okay. If things went, I want to um, ask some detailed questions as far as this uh, university is concerned. Were there any serious problems by then when you were the chancellor of this university? No, we did not. It was, you would say, uh, following the level of higher education in Cameroon was an ideal university, ideal. Okay. I understand during your tenure of office, uh, we, it was Father Josh Keze who was there. How was your relationship with him? Sir? No, I'm very, very cordial. And, uh, he was a great worker at the university and for the church. But a lot has been said about uh, uh, Father Josh Keze and the university. I think it would be nice if your relationship was good with him, as far as the coordination of the university is concerned. Now, can you give us some insights? Um, I, I looked at him as a person who is very, very gifted. Mm -hmm. And as a priest, he's a great pastor. And as minister, I thought he, he was really top. He was very good. Because he would coordinate, he could relate well with the uh, administration, with the faculty, with the students, and so on. So he did a lot. Okay, but since many things have been said about uh, Father George Keze, when you moved out, you moved out as uh, at the diocese, as the head of the diocese. Some of these things, uh, problems came up. Now, what can you say about these problems and maybe him quitted from the university? No, I mean, they, they, would have, they would have come as they came, the problems and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, we would expect that at some point an institute like that would have uh, problems that just all of a sudden appear. I think that's where we had the difficulties, that the problems just simply came and uh, he was uh, 
struggling with them. Um, when he was removed from the university, he was in America, in the U.S. The idea of being in the U.S. was that he was going to be working and trying to coordinate uh, things to work in favor of the foundation of the university, which is in the U.S. Yeah, so uh, some of our priests from here, they are in uh, America working, and the idea was that they would be trailed into the system. That means into this uh, foundation set up so that um, to manage it, if you have to run the thing as they do in America, you must have a lot of money to get a foundation running. So uh, we were doing that in such a way that those who are there, they will gradually be trailed into the system and they will be working for the university there and then they come back also and they're, they're helping out in the university itself. So uh, George therefore was there, uh, Padan Kese was there then as a coordinator of those activities in favor of the foundation. Yes, why in the U.S. we understand why he was there, mm. uh, there was a sudden suspension of his activities. Yeah. Yes, and uh, on phone, we followed some of his discourse. On phone, he said he was a contractor. The university was on contract. I don't know how true this... Um, in contract in the sense that I mentioned that point already, that uh, uh, the university was established and you hand it over to a body of people or persons whom you think are strong enough to run it effectively in your name. In yeah, your because name, what I'm saying, he claimed is. that the contract that was signed mm. with him coordinating the university, the activities of the university is not yet over and he was suspended, which means that uh, at the emergence of this university, he was a contractor to make sure that he coordinates activities there to this term of office. I don't know. That's what maybe I want yes, to um, the, According to the, the, the statutes are terribly important for the running of the whole thing. If you okay. really want to follow closely, read those things, and uh, you see the details of what is spelled out for each person. So for him, uh, we signed a contract with him that he would work, that's the second one now, from 2018 to 2023 as a, a president of the university, uh, what we call here vice chancellor. Okay. Yes, so he was there uh, until 2023. Then the uh, board of trustees will look at the whole matter again and see is it useful to keep him there or we bring in another person. So they would have studied that closely and then decided on whether it could go on. According to the statute, if they give you two terms, two mandates, then the second mandate you have to leave. Okay, in other words, you're saying that although he claimed that he had a contract, but the Board of Trustees had the right to terminate that contract. Yes, so, the, yes the Board of Trustees is the highest okay. body in he, the universe. Now, let me come to that. Who has the authority maybe to relieve the president of the, that, uh, the Catholic University Institute of Boya from his duties. Is it the bishop or the board of trustees? No, according to the statutes which I personally signed, uh, the bishop cannot do that on his own. Uh, we've entrusted everything into the hands of the board of trustees. He is there as a member, he is there as a chancellor, he is there as the uh, final word. But he's the he, overseer. Yes, that's how it is especially for the spiritual matter, because they can't be university. Now, because let us make it very clear. He is the head of the university. The bishop is the head of the university. Now, you are talking of uh, maybe terminating the duties of the president of the university. Yes. There must be that liaison with the board of trustees. Yes. But in case of any chaos, who takes the upper hand? No, the, the board of the board of uh, trustees will be summoned. We have the funds to come for discussion. For discussions. Yeah, whether things are good or they are bad, they come for discussion. Okay, now uh, for the workers that are claiming they were maybe wrongfully terminated by the uh, apostolic administrator, do they have the grounds for their grievances based on the university status and employment contract? Yes, everybody, everybody 
maybe some were done which I, whom I do not know, but everybody works or worked at the time in CUIB on contract. Everybody, if according to the Cameroon labor law and the, the, the services of the church, that's how it was. Everybody was on contract. Okay, now that the present bishop terminated the activity, mm -hmm. I don't know, what does the status, the university status say? No, he's no, not supposed to do that. According to the statute, he's yes. not supposed to, to, to lay them off like that or terminate their thing on his own. The board of trustees has to discuss that and see what, uh, what to decide on. And so they cannot decide that on their own. Or he cannot decide that on his own. But According he, to the statute, Okay, he decides it with which uh, body or persons? The body of the, the board of trustees yeah. will discuss the matter in the presence of the chancellor, mm -hmm. uh, the bishop and chancellor of the university. Yeah, but what our viewers would like to know, because we need to decipher this, in case of any confusion, who stands, who has the power to take the fight, to say, the, give the final word of decision? No, once there is the board of trustees that yes. has the final authority, that board must meet and discuss the matter. Okay, uh, so let us come back to um, to Father Keze. You know, a lot has been said about Father Keze. You know, especially uh, a few years back, and uh, maybe his way of administration. There has been, according to our opinion and other opinions, there has been this confusion and maybe problems between the present bishop and Father Keze. How can you size this? No, um, you have to situate the problem. Uh, what, what I say, and uh, it's from already mentioned, is that uh, all the things that he is and does, as far as being head of the university is concerned, they are all worked out by the statutes. The, every detail okay. is given there, and then the decision making to uh, uh, employ him, appoint him, and so on is the work of the. But uh, his name has sparked a lot of controversy among the priests, you know, the members of the clergy. It has sparked a lot of controversy. What do you think should be the reason? No, I think that uh, I have not judged from childhood, I would say. Mm -hmm. I was teaching in the primary school when he was a partner of five years, yeah. kicking uh, uh, this uh, new team along the road in Fiango there. Then, I taught him again in Bishop Gogan College. I taught him again in the major seminary in Bambu. So I, I thought that I, I knew him fairly well. And he's a, he's a very uh, strong person in character. He's a very strong person intellectually and very strong person morally and so on. So I thought... Yeah, that, really, those attributes yeah. you've given are somehow true about him. Yes. But at one time, I believe he has been education secretary yes, yes, of yes, the yes, church. Yes. And uh, if we, if I'm right, at one time he felt like the priests who are heading institution, educational institution, should go back to the church and the lay persons take over. And it's like some priests mm. were not happy about it. Well, uh, when you are in charge of a, of a situation like that, you have to decide at some point. It's not that you have to choose everybody. It's not possible. So you see the good in handing the schools back to lay people or of keeping the priests and religious in charge. You have to decide because of the actual situation. So uh, if the priests had been there and they thought it was a good thing for them to be in charge, if you are taking, some of them will not just say, okay, let it go. So want to also remain there. So it happened so. during your turn of office. Mm -hmm. What was your take? And no, your I mean, take? I decided that the priest and the religious would be different after the school until such a time that we thought it was good to change. Okay. Um, he's uh, maybe high, maybe a handing of uh, the institutions in the Diocese of Boya 
and maybe his administration. How could you size it? Because as you say, he's somebody who is so decisive. He was very focal. He was uh, somebody who is so strong in his decision and straight to the point. How did you, did you look at this? Nowadays, that, uh, you know, administrators are condemned, they are criticized in handling affairs. No, I thought that he was a, he was a very good person to handle all those offices. That's how we, I moved him from education secretary to uh, uh, the head of the Catholic University. Yes. Yeah. Okay, let's get to this. Uh, there is a name of a Reverend Sister, Reverend Sister Mary Kombe. Uh, uh, it keeps on coming up in so many matters. I don't know, who is this Reverend Sister Mary Kombe, please? She's a member of the Darsan Congregation of Religious Women called the Sisters of St. Therese of the Diocese of Boya. Um, uh, she is working in the university as any other person. So she has an employee of the university society. And uh, formerly she was the superior general of their congregation. So she was a person well educated, or she is a person well educated and uh, very capable intellectually and morally and so on. So uh, we thought that a person like that would be good for the institute. Okay. Yes, but uh, Sister Mary Kombe, um, I wonder what she did because recently uh, there was an order from the present Bishop, uh, Bishop Bibi, for her to be arrested. I don't know, what's your take? No, I, I, I never uh, heard about that, uh, that uh, she was, uh, I mean, that they asked her to be arrested. I didn't know about that, I only heard it now. Yes, she was asked to be arrested and she was even interrogated by the uh, judicial police. Yes. Well, if they accuse you of anything, they just take right, uh, the due procedure takes, uh, due process takes place. That means if you are accused of anything at all, uh, true or not true, uh, you have to follow that and then uh, disprove the, the claims. Okay, now that the matter is still pending uh, in court and uh, you were bishop, do you find any, are you aware of any illegality that she committed during your tenure? No, I mean, I thought that she was a very powerful woman and she, she worked very well. That's why, as I was mentioning earlier, uh, she was made superior general of that congregation. You know, superior general it must be somebody who masters the whole situation of the community and you are able to help everybody. So, um, I, we, we actually accepted her as a member of the university because we thought that she was a person of integrity. Okay, now we know so very well uh, when administrators leave, others come in, but before they leave, they have to give some insight to the new administrator to know how to move on. Now you left and the uh, Bishop Bibi came in. Uh, did you inform Bishop Bibi about situations in the Diocese of Boya? Yes, we were together. I didn't just come out of the house immediately. I was supposed to leave on the 2nd of January that year. Uh, I didn't leave immediately. Uh, the handing over and everything was supposed to be done on the 2nd of January of that year. I didn't. I stayed there till the 12th of June that year. So we were together. Uh, celebrating and praying together, eating uh, at meals together, and doing many things together. So uh, he gradually got used to the house and the everything in the offices and so on. Then uh, after Easter of uh, that year, uh, uh, the handing over notes were given to him. Yeah, where you talk of... I gave the handing over notes to him. Okay, the impression you give in your relationship was cordial when he came. Yes, it was very cordial. But was that formal handover? Yes, I, a, I did do the handing over notes and gave him. Okay. Yes. But um, I don't know how is it done in the church. Is it a ceremonial thing or you do it in private? As you said, you handed a note to him. Mm -hmm. Well, you can do it in private. You can call people. It wouldn't really make a, di a, a, a difference. The important thing is that you formally uh, do uh, dissociate yourself from the service and hand them over to the new person. 
Okay, let's come back to education as far as the Diocese of Wea is concerned. Uh, let's talk about mm -hmm. the Catholic education and uh, diocesan schools. Now, uh, there has been controversy over block schools accounts of uh, A and T and system primary and secondary school. And the cases are currently in, in court. Now, are you aware of these schools? Yes, I am. I yeah. permitted them to be founded. Okay. Now, um, who own the school? Let me start with the A and T uh, system, primary and secondary school. Uh, it was a very, very new thing that we thought out and went to the ministry uh, and uh, put the files before them. They studied them and uh, approved them, so you could start. So I didn't want that they should go under the education secretariat. Okay. They should not be there. It was an experimental thing. Yeah. So a very new thing coming in because of the crisis. Uh, what had happened was that the first year of the crisis, 2017, we noticed that very many children, many, many, were around this uh, Moliko area doing nothing, just sitting around the, the day, during the day like that. So we thought it was not good for the children, especially traumatized children coming because of the fighting and so on. So we thought if we started a school for them, it would be good. So we did uh, contact the foreign funders. Uh, and explain the situation to them. They accepted, but they had their conditions. So if we had to accept them, then uh, we do not just insist that everything is Catholic as Catholic, because if it went under the, the education secretariat, yes. uh, the people would not fund it. So I asked, therefore, Father George, uh, who has started this thing uh, uh, slowly and quietly, to look after it and negotiate with those people who insisted that there must be a country representative. And so I gave joy, I proposed joy to a Father Joy Kesset to them as a country representative, which they accepted. So we were working on that thing, hoping that it would succeed. And I think that it, uh, it has, the whole system has gone on, on well of, so far because they evaluate every year and send reports to those who are giving the money for running those schools. And, uh, okay, they uh, are abroad. Yes, they are people from outside. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, but let me ask in clear terms, uh, who are those who created the school and who are those sponsoring the school? Who own the school? The, the owners of the, well, owners of the school as such is a university that's sponsored by these outside people sponsored by these outside people. If yeah. I understand this school, we, it's found in the same campus with the Cali... Uh, well, that university. was a temporary thing at the time. Okay. We had to look for a place. Children are there, hundreds of them. Yeah. What do you do? You have to look for a, 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 an, an emergency solution. That was where we were with, with the whole thing. But there has been this controversy of the account being blocked. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, what can you tell? Yeah, the about point that? about the account being blocked is that one of the things about this school was that we agreed with the funders, this uh, foreign uh, funding agencies. Uh, we agreed with them that we would open a separate account, not on the diocesan one, because if they were under the education secretariat, their accounts go straight away to the education secretariat account. Uh, but we wanted them to be sort of uh, apart. Yeah. sort of uh, autonomous. Yeah. So uh, they agreed and they proposed that we open an account in the bank for those uh, schools. Now, the account has been blocked by who and uh, maybe the matter is in court. Yeah, what I heard. Yes, now that the matter is in court, I don't know, the person who blocked this account, does the person have the right to do that? No. Even the bishop himself, even myself, if I were there, could not block that. Are you aware of the person or persons who blocked this account? No, I've just heard about it that the accounts have been blocked, but the details I do not know. I can't say much about And that. the sponsors are like upset. Yeah, they are upset. The that just their stop. school has been seized yes. and so on. They are not going to be sending their money if they are not properly accounted for or properly used. They will not send the money. That will just end the project. So, what can you tell us about the project as of now? 
No, I don't know anything. It's more, already a little more than two years since I left office and uh, uh, it's the new bishop who is uh, running those things. So if there are things there, uh, he would need to clarify. I cannot be clarifying the thing at the distance of more than two years uh, when I really don't know how it's functioning. Okay, let us look at the teachers of the institution because if the institution has a problem, the workers there must be affected. Yes. Who employ them and who is in charge of maybe taking care of them? It's the university that did them, the Father George, who did that. Okay. Uh, the, can we have a precise location now, as at now, where the school, the primary and secondary school is found and the Catholic University? Uh, they are in one campus. It's a bit okay. complicated there okay. because where the Catholic uh, the campus here in town is uh, situated, that is a theology school. Okay. Yes, theology school is not supposed to be university, but since university had difficulty starting, they were supposed to be all in Wakaka, outside okay, of town okay. there. Uh, but at the time, it was not possible. The university had been advertised, parents and, and young people were waiting, and we could not do otherwise, because that time we could not go on there because the buildings were not available. Just beginning, uh, the place where they are now is supposed to be for the business school, for the university, that was possible because the first two years, we just do courses for single, whole classes. But we reach the third year, you split into departments of the schools. Mm -hmm. Then you need more space. That's where the new place in Wokaka would have been the most suitable for them. But because this one was a, a, a handy for the university and so on, well, we allowed them because the School of Theology Holds, but in the afternoons and evenings. Okay. It's not during the day. So the university could run from 8 o'clock or whatever time to um, um, 5 o'clock when, when the institute there will start its classes. Okay. And, and then they make sure that they reserve three classrooms for the School of Theology. That's, okay. what, that's what was happening at least when I was still there. Before we take the last bend uh, to this. Uh, interview uh, now the schools operating there how do you size up the relationship between those schools maybe the administrators there and the familiarity between them since they are just in the same time i cannot say a thing okay because since i left office uh, formally the president used to inform me regularly on the daily running of the university okay. would inform me you come to give a report all the time. But all this time I've lost contact. Okay, Bishop Emeritus Emmanuel Bushu, um, I would like to get into this. How is your relationship with the present bishop and the Father Keze and maybe the other priest of the diocese? No, it's very good. I don't have, a, I wouldn't say I have a problem with anybody. Really. Honestly, I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't say that. Uh, I mean, we are together for things which uh, call for our presence together. Um, then uh, we have celebrations and all those uh, things of the diocese I got there. Because I still belong to the clergy of the diocese of Boya. Okay. So, so I've retired here. So uh, then with the priest, no, I, I don't think that. Okay, you generally take decision or don't retire, and you generally take decision with them. No, when you retire, you are just not an authority anymore. Okay, okay. Yes. Now, lastly, um, what is your suggestion to end all this? I want to get your opinion to end all these problems in the Diocese of Boya that you coordinated so well, but after you let some skirmishes uh, came out and problems. What do you think has to be done to end all this problem? No, as I'm just mentioning, <laughs> I, have no, I have no authority for anything, proposing anything. But if they ask, I will talk. I will do my own part. But if I'm not asked, don't interfere. That's how it is uh, in the church. We do like that. Because okay. uh, there have been lots of abuses that uh, I mean, bishops are human too when it comes to this power. Some people can be, begin to cling to power too afterwards. So the church just says, no, once you have gone away, you have gone away. There's no more uh, dealing with authority there in the church. You just go your way. 
Okay, and so you just want to live a cool life? Yes, uh, yes, just tired like that. Okay, uh, maybe your last words before we end this interview, sir. No, just thank you for the for the occasion given me to say some things concerning uh, the some of the things and institutes of the Diocese of Boya. I mean, I've been there for, for quite several years or many years. And um, uh, if there are things to be done, I just hope that they will do them very well. So I thank you for the interest to come and ask so that I say what I think uh, on certain issues that you have raised there. And I hope that uh, uh, they would give another view of what people have heard also. Dear viewers, this is where we come to the end of this special interview with the Emeritus Bishop Emmanuel Bushu, who was Bishop of the Diocese of Boya and is on retirement now for about two years. And as you saw, he's strong and kicking. We just came to ask his opinion. I've been Mwambo William. Thank you so very much. I don't know if there's any other thing that you would have blocked that way. No. That's what I do. What I do. Then, uh, where I do not really, maybe you can.